Hello everyone, I'm here in my new apartment and today I'm going to share all of my tips and tricks on how to become a realistic builder. And also, this video will be a speed build coming out very shortly, so stay tuned for that. And without further ado, let's get right into the video. Before I even place a wall, we're going to talk about something called inspiration inspiration is crucial for your builds as it is the backbone of all your houses which brings me to my first tip which is to gather a ton of inspirational images my favorite places to find these images are pinterest instagram tiktok irl and fellow blocksburg community members just for example here's one of the inspiration pictures i used when creating this apartment my second tip is to familiarize yourself with different design styles if you haven't already. This will help you when gathering inspiration pictures to know exactly what you want and what to look up to find these inspiration images. On my Pinterest account, you'll find a ton of boards with all different design styles that are perfect for finding these inspirational images or just becoming familiar with these design styles. Before we move on to the floor plans, just remember to save all of your inspirational images because we will refer back to them a lot. Next, we're gonna talk about floor plans. My first tip is to use pre-existing floor plans as a guide that you can either use or learn from. A great website to check out is houseplans.net. I will also have it linked below if you would like to look into it further. This website is great because it not only gives you floor plans, but the exteriors that go with them. It is a great beginner tool to kind of get a better idea of how to make better floor plans and also how floor plans relate to the exterior. Now I'm going to show some different examples of floor plans. Here we have two different floor plans. They have the same exterior walls, but completely different interior walls. Let's start with the bad example first. What I don't like about this floor plan is that you're wasting a lot of space and it just kind of seems very random and disorganized. So for example, you need to think of how you use your space. So if you prepare food in the kitchen and want to go eat in the dining room, it is a long walk to kind of carry all this food over and eat. And also this seems like a lot of wasted space right here. This bedroom seems like it's kind of just floating in the middle of nowhere. There's no really reason that this bedroom should just be floating. The stairs are kind of far away from the entryway, which I personally am not a fan of. I think I like to have the stairs easy accessible to the entryway. It just seems very disorganized and random. This one I love so much more because you have the entryway and the stairs together and there seems to be a lot more flow and reason to the space. Like when you walk in, you have the stairs, you have the living spaces that are very open and are very welcoming. And you just have this hallway that leads to all the other rooms, which I think is just a very great flow. You also have the dining room and the kitchen, which are not very far from each other. They're still kind of a little far, but I think it is a good distance. Now we're going to talk about general tips and hacks that will improve your builds a ton. My first tip is to use real life furniture that you can find on websites for sale, or you can use Pinterest. For example, in the living room, I referenced this sofa, and in the dining room, I referenced this chair. Going back to our inspirational pictures, my next tip is to look at all the details in these pictures and think how you can recreate them in Bloxburg. For example, I saw this Parisian fireplace picture and knew I wanted to recreate it in Bloxburg to the best of my abilities. Rethink everything. Is this just a candle for a table? Or could you make it into a light fixture? Is this just a bookend? Or could it be a detail to a fireplace? Use structural items for anything and everything. Here's my living room without any structural items. And here it is with structural items. You can add structurals to furniture, kitchen cabinets, walls, you name it and it just adds more shadows and depth to your space. Another thing that brings in so much depth and realism into the space is using materials on everything. 
Here is my bedroom with no textures, but plastic. And here is my room with all different types of textures. As you can see, this one just looks a lot more realistic as the other one looks more cartoony. My next tip is to use decals. Using decals will transform your space. You can use them as plants, rugs, floors, mirrors, artwork, the options are endless. Here is one bathroom with no decals and here is the same bathroom with decals. As you can see, decals make a huge impact on your room. When using plant decals, make sure that you layer your decals and don't just put one plant decal. Doing this makes the plant look more full and it looks less 2D. Another tip to make your builds more realistic is to not use the Bloxburg mirrors. The Bloxburg mirrors just don't look as realistic and they aren't as customizable as decal mirrors are. Another thing that you may or may not have known is that you can actually color decals. This is just a great tip if you love a rug but don't like the color. You can kind of change it, make it darker or different shades depending on how you like it. Try not to have too many empty spaces and if you're having a hard time filling those awkward corners, you can always try for mirrors, chairs, or plants. Decorating bookshelves is scary. Here's a quick guide on how to make a foolproof bookshelf. Some things to include in your bookshelf are books, coffee table books, picture frames, vases, jars, and bowls, candles, and plants. Lighting can really impact how your room looks. For example, here is the same room in three different lights. This one is, well, pink. This one is way too bright, and this one is just right. It is important to make sure that your room isn't too bright because it washes out all the detail and it hurts my eyes. Lastly, here's a couple tips that you might not want to hear, but will help you so much. My first tip is to learn from watching speed builders. I think watching speed builds can really help you learn the process, learn how to do more custom furniture, it can just really help you overall, even if you aren't planning on recreating the build. My next tip is to do what you want. You don't have to agree with anything I said in this video. Just do whatever you love. And at the end of the day, it is just a game. So have fun, be creative. My last tip is to practice. I know everyone hates to hear it, but it's true. Practice makes perfect. And it takes a long time to get to this point. But hey, you're here, you're watching and learning. And with that being said, I hope this video taught you at least something. Comment down below if you would like me to post a possible part two. That is all I have to say for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!